47 days later and we've officially completed construction here in the studio. And today in this video, we're gonna take a look at all of the changes and we'll also be comparing some before and after images. I wanna start this tour right up here in the mezzanine space, specifically the stairs, oh my gosh, they look so much better than before. Uh, they were just like ruggedly built with some two by fours. The handrails were pretty sketchy, but those have been reinforced because they've been framed. Nicely painted as well. They've got some drywall on them. And then of course the stairs themselves are cushioned and spiffied up with the carpet, which leads down into the Lego city area. There never used to be a pony wall up here. It was just open. And we've actually made the mezzanine space more functional and also safer. Uh, with the addition of these beautiful cabinets, which actually match the look of the staircase and just look beauty. I decided to paint those and I think it, or I think they turned out terrific. Uh, originally they were actually just MDF and I think the white paint really makes them pop and stand out here and just makes this place look a lot cleaner. We also have this little area right here, which goes over top of the washrooms before <laughs> this didn't look very good at all. Once again, there was no pony walls and there's also these heat vents that came right over top of the like ceiling space above the washrooms. And there was also a pipe that came down off here. So that pipe has actually been moved and now it goes down into the utility room against that wall, which just makes a lot more sense. Also, in addition to that, uh, the carpet has been added to this place <laughs> before it was actually just all plywood. Also, in addition to all of those changes, we have lighting up here, which is all throughout the entire uh, Bay Area down there. And some plugs have been added as well. In fact, there was a bunch of conduits that used to run along this wall, even more than there are right now. And there was a bunch of conduits that ran along this beam here as well and those have all been removed and the walls have been touched up because we were able to match the paint color. I also added some window coverings just using uh, some plastic board and I think the outcome of this place is absolutely fantastic. I cannot wait to bring in all of the Lego fixtures, all of the parts, the tables, and the things that I mentioned earlier, like the couch, the microwave, the fridge, and all that. It's just such a nice chill zone up here. I'm, I'm so happy with it. This pony wall looks fantastic as well with the uh, capping on top. And then also the baseboard along the bottom, a heat vent integrated into that wall there as well. There is two things that I still wanna tackle up here. I wanna re-insulate these pipes. They still need to be re-insulated. I either need to go get some tin tape or just rip all that stuff off and re-insulate them myself. Luckily for me, those are very accessible so I can get in there and I can still do that myself. No big deal. Uh, so I still wanna take care of that because it looks sort of rugged, but hey, this is a warehouse and it's sort of cool to keep some of the original nostalgia in here and <laughs> maybe they'll stay, I haven't quite decided. I also gotta get some malamine cut so that it can cap this. I already put the uh, structure in there and that's supported with two by fours. And I put this here just so we can visualize what that's gonna look like. But eventually I'm gonna get some 5 8 malamine and it's just going to cap the top of the furnace room. The furnace room is still gonna be open here just because we have all of these pipes that come up out of the furnace room. But I also wanna leave that open for ventilation as well. So the mezzanine space definitely looks a lot better now than it did before. Oh my gosh, it has come a very long way. The exposed plywood didn't look very good as the flooring. The pipes going over top of the ceiling of the bathrooms didn't look as good at all and they were actually sort of a tripping hazard. And speaking of tripping hazards, oh my gosh, there was no wall protecting you from falling off, which was just ridiculous. And the stairs didn't look good at all. So you make your way down the staircase. Oh my gosh, I got a really funny before picture of the stairs. So here's that. And here's after. Oh my, that looks so much better. It is ridiculous. In addition to the stairs being touched up, this whole wall has essentially been revitalized as well. First off, the cold air return. The existing cold air return was but ugly. It was like rusting out. I thought that that had to be replaced, so we did that. 
Also, this entire wall right here, that's the shelving, this is the existing wall, has been touched up and patched and also painted to match the color of the stairs. And so is this wall right here. In fact, that wall has been resurrected. There never used to be a wall right there. That wall is 12 feet tall and that conceals the utility room with the hot water tank and also the furnace. The reason we wanted to create that room was to conceal those things, also to hide all of the pipes that are coming off the top of those things, the furnace and the hot water tank and just all the different pipes running down into the utility room. And it's also gonna give us a great spot for Lego art. One other area has been significantly improved and that's where the electrical box is. You can see the electrical box and there's also some modems that feed the internet into the studio. But this area before didn't look very good at all because there was a really old telephone service and there was all sorts of wires and conduits being fed off it and I completely removed that and then all of the conduits that were affiliated with that running all throughout this place have also been removed, which really tidied it up. Walking into the main area here is like a breath of fresh air. It has been completely revitalized. First off with the cloud backdrop. The cloud mural looks absolutely fantastic and it is gonna suit the Lego city beautifully. Another huge change in this area, of course, is the carpet. Before, it was a concrete floor that was pretty beat up. It was absolutely filthy, like it was disgustingly dirty. And all of the paint had sort of, or started peeling off and was chipping off in areas. And I think the carpet tile really pulls this whole room together, makes it look less like a warehouse and just makes it a little more homey and cushy on the feet as well. This electrical box did stay here in case I ever decide to get power ran on this side of the studio. Before there was like these wires bursting out of it and it also fed electrical plugs along the bottom which actually weren't connected. I decided not to, to feed that box just because the cost of doing that was too high and we have enough power on this side of the room and if need be I can run extension cords going underneath the Lego City tables. However, with that said, I did move this switch which actually used to be inside the utility room and also added this plug and there's an additional plug in the inside as well. So we do have some power on this side of the room. So we've got the mural, we've got the carpet which concealed that very ugly floor. Some other big changes as well. The lighting has been significantly improved. I've got eight foot LED lights installed starting way over there above the garage door and then going way into the mezzanine space as well. I think it was 22 eight foot light fixtures which were professionally installed and actually flipped the other way. The eight foot fluorescent light fixtures that used to be in here actually ran lengthwise and they did not look very good at all. Another huge change is the heating. We got a 30 foot infrared heater installed which is a radiant heater. It emits heat like the sun. It warms this place up just beautifully. And in fact, the old heater, which used to be up there, has been removed. And I was actually scared to turn that thing on. So I actually never turned that one on, but we replaced it with a beautiful radiant heater that's up in the sky. And I think the lights, the heater, the carpet, the mural and the wood ceiling just look absolutely fantastic in the Lego city area. The old furnace room is out in the open and the old school furnace and hot water tank were exposed. Oh my gosh, they did not look good at all. With the 12 foot wall installed, there's also a door that conceals the brand new furnace and also brand new hot water tank which is just a treat because it's gonna heat this place more efficiently and also give us some nice warm water, which of course is fed into the washroom. When we took possession of this place, it had two washrooms. We've actually decided to reduce that to one washroom. So on the left side here, we've got a washroom. And then on the right hand side, we have a storage closet. No need for two washrooms. The washroom has been of course completely redone. The walls have been painted white in here which matches the beautiful new toilet and also the 
laundry style sink. So this sink is awesome because it's nice and deep. I'm gonna be able to clean Lego in here. We've got warm water. This can come out, which is pretty sweet. And then we've got a nice industrial style backsplash, which matches the vanity. And then some nice cupboards in here as well where we can store all of the cleaning supplies. I just gotta get something that's gonna protect that wall. <laughs> there we go, that looks great. I am missing a toilet paper holder and also a towel holder, but I plan on installing that within the next couple of days. And then here we have the storage room. The walls in here, I uh, repainted them so that they match the existing paint color. Eventually I'm gonna put shelves flanking the walls in here so that I can store away all of my stuff, such as the broom, the mop, the vacuum, a ladder, and a whole bunch of shipping supplies and stuff that isn't really related to Lego, but is required to operate the business. So yeah, I'm really happy that I decided to make a storage room and also a bathroom. In addition to the upgrades, We've installed new light fixtures as well. These are pretty cool because they actually have two modes. Look at that. You can set the mood in the washroom. Pretty fancy. What a big upgrade that was. Uh, the original condition of the washrooms was a little bit scary and I'm really happy with the outcome of that. Although I do have to tinker with this door here. I know it's not lined up and it's not closing properly. I just need a Phillips screwdriver, which I don't have right now. And I can just make some very simple adjustments to fix that. Speaking of not having a Phillips screwdriver, I also need to tighten the screws on the backside of this doorknob. These doors are actually original, but they've been painted. One of the next things that I need to do is actually start to move some of my Lego over here so that I can remove all of the stuff that's currently on my Lego City tables and I could reuse that lumber to create new tables for the new Lego City setup, which of course is gonna be in this room. All of the shelving is gonna go in these front rooms right here. There used to be three front rooms, but now there's only two because we actually removed a wall in here. So this was used to be split into two rooms. You can see where the wall used to be right there. There was a little tiny room and then a medium sized room and now we have one large room. The smaller of the two rooms is probably going to be all Star Wars so I would imagine this is going to be a Lego Star Wars room if I have enough Lego Star Wars to fill this room. We made some changes in here to accommodate the Billy shelves. They actually raised up these plugs and removed some other plugs that protruded too far off the wall. This room has been painted and so has the larger room as well. And then new lights have been installed as well, making these rooms really, really, really bright. I cannot wait to add some shelving in here full of colorful Lego sets just to help break up the color a little bit because it's almost too white in here. Oh my gosh, it's so bright. It's absolutely wild. <laughs> There's no shortage of lights in these rooms. Uh, so there used to be conduits that came down everywhere and there was these little telephone jacks everywhere. But when I ripped out all of the, uh, the telephone stuff coming off of the panel beside the electrical panel, I was able to remove a bunch of that stuff. And that only left the two steel boxes that had to be raised so that they go above the Billy bookcases. Eventually, we're gonna be bringing all of the cabinets in here. I'm pretty sure the packs units are gonna go there and the Billy bookcases are gonna flank around here and pretty much this whole room here is gonna be full of Billy bookcases and exciting Lego sets as well. Beyond that, not a whole lot happened in these rooms. I mean, the removal of the wall was absolutely huge and then the paint really brought them to life along with the lights as well. I do have some leftover carpet. If I so choose, I could lay that carpet, which is currently tucked underneath the stairs, in one of these rooms or both if I so choose. But with that said, I really don't mind the look of the tile. I honestly really do like it. And I think the carpet sort of pulled it together. If I were to carpet one room, it would probably be this one because that tile is sort of a random color. It doesn't really match well with this tile and that tile over there. But ultimately, I think once we get some colorful Lego in here, I'm gonna be really happy with it. Also, Mrs. Brixie, my wife, she mentioned that maybe we should buy a big Star Wars ruggable rug for either this room or that room, or we could put some cool area rugs in the center, which might look pretty cool and sort of pull the whole look together as well. So that is something that we can consider as well. 
Over the last 47 days, we've really taken this place and turned it into something that was old, dungy, and sort of beat up, and we converted it into something that's warm, cushy, and looks really presentable. And I think it's going to be a beautiful home to the Lego and the Lego studio, and just a beautiful place of work for me and my family as well. It is going to be uh, and a very exciting uh, uh, future, and I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about it. I, I am just on cloud nine. Uh, this is incredible, the, the amount of things that we've been able to accomplish here over the last 47 days is amazing. And I think it's actually been more than 47 days because I've been working on this project since February of 2023. That's when I started looking into getting a larger place of work for uh, the YouTube channel, and it took an entire year to get the financing and get the ducks in a row, and then after that, there was the fight with everybody to try and get this place secured, and then there was the fight of getting it properly renovated so that it could be warm and presentable and host a really epic Lego collection and, and be home to uh, me and my family and also the YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed the uh, transformation uh, of videos over the last month. It's truly amazing how we were able to take something that looked so bad to begin with and turn it into something that looks really, really cool. I know uh, it, was, it was sort of hard to visualize at first, but I had a vision as to what I wanted to do with the studio, and I actually came up with an idea of having a Lego studio years and years ago, and what I described was something pretty similar to this, having the front rooms and then having the back warehouse bay where you can actually host a large Lego city. So I've had this dream and this initiative for quite some time, and it's pretty cool that we were able to pull it all together here uh, in early uh, 2024. I'm really excited uh, for the next few months and also the next five years to see what we do with this place and how we transform it into something that is completely different than, than what it already is today because right now we're just looking at the empty shell that has been sort of polished and looks good and is ready for the next phase, which of course is going to be the actual Lego. And of course, you know, I wouldn't have been able to do any of this alone. So I want to give everybody that views this channel a huge shout out. I highly appreciate it. Thank you so much for all the positive words, all the support. It has been truly amazing. And also I want to give all of the uh, trades workers a huge shout out as well. Like, thank you so much for getting things done in such a, a efficient way. To get this done in 47 days, I think was pretty incredible. A uh, huge shout out to Paul. Paul uh, was my main guy behind the scenes that helped me contract this whole place out. He built the, built the beautiful walls, painted them, taught me along the way so that we could lay carpet and paint together and help frame walls together, and sort of taught me a lot as well. A uh, big shout out to uh, just everybody that supported me here on this journey, like my friends, my family, all the viewers as well, and just all the tradespeople, because this is the dream, and I can't believe it's actually happening here in April of 2024. It's pretty wild, everybody. I can't wait to start bringing in stuff, because that's going to be the next journey, bringing in all the fixtures and the tables and the shelves and the Lego, and it's going to be so much fun. This is when the fun begins. This is when we uh, get back to our roots of uh, not being a construction channel, but uh, being a uh, Lego YouTube channel, which is, which is pretty hyped if you ask me. So once again, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this series. Please remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for some more great stuff. And thank you so much for all of the continued support. Farewell.